<laughs> you are listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Kerala West with my guest, Duff. And uh, that was Ian Hunter, Mott the Hoople, the golden age of rock and roll. Yeah! Yeah! And uh, here we are. Going to do an hour of the box live from the Viper Room. And I want to thank my buddy, Duff, for showing up. And uh, here we go. We played this stage a bunch. You a and bunch. I. You and I. A bunch, man. <clears throat> About 25 years ago. Like every Monday. Yeah. In a row. This doesn't seem like 25 years ago, does it? No, it don't. We were riding mountain bikes every day. Yeah. Physically, a lot different. I didn't. I didn't think I could play music again because I was sober. You just. You just got a. Uh, Sober. So was that was that like your your was that your testing? Well, you neurotic? it was you it was you. I was because you're you're Steve, welcome. Yeah, it's true. So Steve Jones, I wrote I've written about it before. I mean, you were like, you want to come and play some? Uh, this show was one show. Yeah. Right. And I and I was honest. I I'm like I don't know if I can play. You know, without like a cocktail or a, yeah. something. Yeah. And but you st- it's Steve Jones like uh, okay, and you said you can do it. It's all right. And uh, that first show up on this stage, I was terrified. Yeah, terrified. Yeah, thought everybody was staring at me, and they actually kind of were because I looked completely <laughs> different. It was a, like a year later, a year and a half later, and I wasn't bloated. And you, know, you look good. I just looked completely different. Yeah, yeah, ripped. I mean, long ripped. golden locks. People thought I had a, like a facelift or something. You must have had a facelift. Really? Oh, because yeah. of what you looked like before. Yeah. Bloated. Yeah. Yeah. But anyhow, I got to play with, with we, and we started playing. There's an audience here, so I'm going to look at the audience and, and talk sure. to them. Sure. There's an audience on, on the radio too, right? <laughs> I guess. You do this so that you can get applauded once every you know Friday. What? You know what? I kind of, uh, it's a bit nerve-wracking because you act different when there's an audience. The like, monitors. If it was just me and you, it'd be a different interview. Yeah, I'm getting used to it. I just, it just, just, it doesn't matter. Just, right. you know. But I was this. I was speaking last week. I had Fred on, Fred Armisen, yeah. and I was talking to him. When I first got sober, this was the stage I played on. Oh, when I had a little band called uh, Dano and Jones. I'd just gotten sober like 35 years ago. And we put a little band together, and this was the first thing. And that's exactly what I said. I don't think I can do this yeah. without at least a beer. So that's funny. You feel like everybody's just staring right at you, and they weren't. I'm sure, you know. Well, I was the best looking one on the stage. So they oh probably, yeah, they probably was. Did you have the long hair? No, it was kind of puffy. Oh, puffy. You know, like short and eighties. Oh. It was like eighty two, eighty three. Oh, oh. Yeah. Before the long hair, okay. yeah. Right. Shoot, I mean, you know, yeah. But that's a funny coincidence, like. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just what it is. Uh, the stage really playing every Monday. Once we started after that first show, uh, we raised money for Shannon Hoon's some guy wife had cancer. Uh, no, he he had passed. Wasn't that the first show? Oh, uh, yeah. And we and he had a brand new baby, and the money was to raise. For, for uh, the show was to raise money for the the baby. Yeah, you know. Uh, but there was another one, some guy I think we were doing a benefit for. I don't know. I I, oh, I don't this, remember. This is not I, good, I, is it? This is not. Well, good. my mind was still forming. It was like a yeah. I was like a toddler's brain at that point, yeah, like yeah. forming. Yeah. Neurons were connecting again. Yeah. You know for sure. Yeah. But Steve and I would ride mountain bikes. Pretty much every day. Yeah. And and Steve started bringing in these songs, which became the Neur- Neurotic Outsiders yeah. record. So like, I have these these demos. Yeah. And it was all these great. If you're me, you got to understand, and me and a bunch of people like me, um, Steve Jones was, guitar playing was the thing that you based your knowledge of music off of. Really? I you're mean, welcome. It's true. We were, I mean, I was backstage this clash thing I did here last Saturday yeah. at the at the Roxy across yeah. the street. Yeah. And and uh, you know, all these guitar players I'm talking to and, and 
Jeff Slate, all these guys from New yeah. York came out. It was it wasn't Thunders because we were too young for Thunders, but but the, the dolls, Pistols, yeah. the for for New York Dolls, yeah. um, but um, the Pist- Pistols introduced me to LAMF, which Johnny Thunders record, yeah. And I'm like, Heartbreak oh, I see is... the lineage of the guitar playing style now, but um, I don't know what my point was. How great of a guitar player I was! I think it was yeah. something along them lines. I was going somewhere with it, though. <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, I guess just to be able to play those shows here um, every Monday and and get like my feet back underneath me, you know, and, and play and the songs that you wrote. There were these demos. That's what it is. We're mountain yeah. bike riding, and he's playing me these demos. I'm like, these are these are Steve uh, Jones songs, and he's playing them for me, and and uh, he's he's saying we should make a record. And I'm the other guitar player. I'm not playing bass because right, John play, right. John Taylor. Taylor playing bass amazing bass player yeah so but that's that i'm like i go to the first rehearsal and i know my cover is going to be blown because my rhythm guitar player playing is just a copy of steve jones i mean really just all every little riff i know is learned from him so you would think i paid him to say all this wouldn't you <laughs> no it's true no i'm joking i was a little nervous i'm like oh, my, my cover is going to be blown um but uh they were what, fun fun shows though new rights we yeah. did an album. We got basically signed from playing here because we had like it was a thing every Monday and it was turned into this big, like every, it was the place to be on a Monday and we'd yeah. get guests up, we'd get Iggy Pop up, we'd get Billy Idol. We even got uh, Mel- Melanie from the Spice Girls to Spice, get up, she right? sang Anarchy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got a lot of people, Ian Ashbury, right? Ian, uh... Brian Setzer. Lot, lot remember of Brian Setzer came up. Do you remember that? And no. he pulled up in his hot that cool fifties car and he knew all the chords, the real chords. Like the, the Beatles chord. We I think we did a Beatles song. Yeah. But he knew all the, the real shapes of the chords. Yeah, he's now he's a proper guitar player. Proper. And I'm looking at the chords, and I think you were looking at the chords too, like <laughs> um, Oh, never mind that. Yeah. Let's do the other thing. Yeah. Oh man, we had Seal played with us here. He, I think Seal, Seal. Yeah. Did, but but what, what we would do with Neurotic Outsiders at the end, we'd bring up a guest, and and with Iggy, we'd just play Stooges, probably Dog or whatever. Yeah, definitely Dog. I got a ride or something. But we'd bring like a somebody like Seal, a closeted you know punk fan, and and do like a damned song. Yeah, you know, uh, Melanie for the Spice Girls did. Pistol song. Yeah. Um, super cool. We're going to uh, we're gonna go and play a song. It's actually you play on this song. It's uh, Ozzy Osbourne from the Nile. Oh, 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 yeah. We can talk about that, too, if you want to. Well, we'll come, come back and talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, which one? What song are you going to play? We're going to play, uh, oh, bloody hell, what's it called? Straight to Hell? What's it called? Under the, Under, Under the Graveyard. I didn't play on that one. Are you serious? I played on Straight to Hell. The rest of it. Oh, man. I don't think I played on it. It's the program director told me you played on it. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway. It's a great song. You sound like you played on this song. No, what they did, they did that song after. It does sound like me, but uh, I don't think it is. Okay. Jonesy's Jukebox, Carol OS, with my buddy Duff McKagan. See you in a minute. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Jonesy's jukebox, Carl OS, live from the Viper. I hope we're not interrupting you over there. With my buddy Duff. How are you, buddy? I'm good. That Thanks. was your uh, song we just played, Chip Away. Yeah. And uh, before that was the Aussie song that you didn't play bass on. <laughs> I don't believe it was me. But we're going to play one that you yeah. played on at the end. Well, in a bit. <clears throat> yeah, we went in that the Aussie thing that that is about to come out. I think they're slowly uh, releasing songs right now. I'm not, I don't know when the release date of the record is, but um, there was just this session I got called to do. I've been playing these gigs with Chad Smith, drummer from Chili yeah, Peppers, yeah. like these wild like cover band 
things. Like we play Van Halen with Taylor Hawkins singing and Mike McCready playing guitar. And uh, we played Montana. But playing with Chad, playing bass, he's such an aggressive drummer. And we, our, our style is yeah. pretty similar. Yeah. And we love playing with each other yeah. that, as a rhythm section. And um, this, this guy, Andrew Watt, called. It was, I, I think it was like a Saturday. And I happened to be in L.A. And he said, do you have, do you have some days this week in the daytime? We need to write a new uh, an Aussie record. We have like four days to do it. Right. So we, we, uh, we showed up at Andrew's studio. Everything was kind of set up. Chad's drum kit was set up. And it was basically one of those things. Who's got a riff? And we wrote. It was really inspired. I think the three of us, Andrew Watt and Chad, myself, we'd never written together. And, you know, that can go sideways in a, in a oh hot second. Yeah. But it didn't. Like the first riff that we threw down. Mick Bob was there, my tech, right? Yeah. He's like, you know, Ozzy likes the Beatles. Make sure there's some Beatles in there. Yeah. And um, so we just, who's got a riff, man? And we th we just threw down in four days and wrote nine songs. Um, Ordinary, Ordinary Man, the new, the ballad with Elton John on it is is one of them. And Straight to Hell is what you're going to play later on. Uh, but I think we wrote and recorded nine songs in, in four days. And the sounds and everything was just perfect. And that was it. We were done. So you 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 wrote them all as well, or all, all three yeah, of you? Yeah, we wrote, we wrote all the music, right? And we had melody ideas, and and Ozzy came, Ozzy just loved it, and and just came in and started writing words and 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 wow. laid down laid down the vocals, and it was kind of like that. And there was a urgent, there was definitely urgency to the whole situation. Um, we had so much time to do it, which yeah. was only four days. And, yeah, and you know, it reminds me of like. That's how rock records, if you're going to get in a room with able players, yeah. that's how you should do it. Man. Yeah. Who's got a riff? Yeah. Let's put this together and trust in the other guys you're playing with, that the two riffs. You know, Chad Smith, such a musical drummer, that he'd be like, that riff, there's a note wrong in there. Yeah. Like, you, you know what? You're right. That riff actually sucks. Let's throw it out and, and yeah. get another riff. Um, so it, it, it just happened to work out great. And uh, I think the, the record's really, really good. Might be another thing you're going to have to go on the road with. No, I can't. I'm going on you're the road. You're busy doing other things. I am. Uh, we're about guns. Is, well, I got to rehearse today. Yeah. Our first rehearsal. Yeah. And I, when I say I got to rehearse, I get to rehearse. Um, and then we're going, we're doing a show at the end of the month uh, for like a Super Bowl. Not at, we're not playing the Super Bowl, but then like the night before. Yeah. In Miami. And then um, we're going to South America. Doing a, a run, and then what's announced? I can't. I, I might screw this up. Europe, Europe is announced, right? We're announced. I know you're going to be doing a bunch in Europe at some point. We're go doing a bunch in Europe, but we're playing like Guatemala. This this run, I never played there before. Dem and DR, we're playing Dominican Republic. Never played there before. Uh, kind of stoked about that. Um, this tour, I've I've got to go to some places. Uh, that I had never been, and you know me, I'd, I'd like to read a lot of books about history and, and yeah. read about places I'm going to. So uh, it's been that part of it's been super great as well. Yeah, being a nerd, going to museums and going off the beaten track and talking to people and doing stuff. You like doing that? I love it. <clears throat> I wish I'd join enthusiasm. Huh? I just, I just want to sit in the bleeding hotel room. <laughs> And do naughty things. I know, I've seen it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I just don't know where you get the energy from. Well, um, you're you're younger than me, and I you're don't... fit. Well, come on, man. Um, uh, I don't know. I I think I'm just I. We're lucky. I you know both of us like are fortunate, not lucky. Uh, fortunate to be a, alive. Yeah. You know, um, in my case, having the, my daughters really kick me in the ass, and 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 the neurotic outsiders had a big part of doing that, and martial arts at the same time, and all that stuff that I that I fell into gave me this real, um, you know, zest for for life, yeah. and and learning and and seeing stuff and talking. I'm very interested in people and cultures, and um, I wrote that that record tenderness based around my experience yeah. 
uh, of traveling the world for 35 years and like this new message that was coming around in 2015 of a divide. I'm like, what divide? I, I mean, I travel all the time. I talk to people all the time and I want to discover what they're talking about this divide. And um, in traveling, I, I really found like talking to people all over America, the d divide is kind of, there's one in, in, in the UK as well, but uh, the American divide specifically I just didn't see it once you go out and talk to people. So you think that's all media driven? It's media and social media. I mean, people yeah. say things on social media they just wouldn't say to each other's face. Oh no, you know, and most things. Yeah, and most and things. you know, like if I'm in a bubble at all, it's one of, of like playing rock and roll shows. Yeah, you know, and seeing a lot a mass of people all kind of celebrating the same thing together yeah, nobody well, asks who you vote for when right, you come to a gun show right. <laughs> you know and you know seeing a uh, a woman in equality and poor for instance you know with full head coverings with the devil horns up just rocking yeah the f out yeah. you know in the front row same as the guy in little rock arkansas yeah you know there's no difference yeah. and um uh maybe music really does y unite more than we know uh but i i got to kind of experience the world at a, you know, uh, inarguably uh, extraordinary time in our world's history right now. Yeah. You know. Have you played anywhere like Dubai or anywhere over them neck of the woods? Oh, yeah. Twice Dubai. Played Abu Dhabi. Played Kuala Lumpur. Played, uh, yeah. Uh, you mean, yeah, those those places? Yes. Them places. Them places. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. not you, you can you can only you can't go everywhere obviously. No, we went down to Africa though this time after oh, yeah. Abu Dhabi, which was great. Played Johannesburg. Yeah. I've been there before with to uh, with um, that Kings of Chaos thing. Yeah, but um, Cape Town and Johannesburg. I think we want to try to explore perhaps like Nairobi, going up there next time. Yeah, we next time we get to that part of the world. It's a long way away. These places are far. Do you think there are some places, though, where rock and roll don't exist? Like if you went to Iraq, let's say, do you think they know what rock and roll is there? Oh, yeah. You know I, what I mean? When, yeah, I do know what you mean. Um, Velvet Revolver went and played this festival in Dubai. This is like 2006. Um, first time I'd ever been there. And it was a brand new rock festival. And all these kids with brand new leather jackets, brand new rock shirts showed up. And, it, and we found out a lot of kids snuck in from Iraq, wow. Iran, came over from India, and yeah, there's there definitely is a a rock, I don't know, scene, but yeah. a, a interest in yeah. in rock music for sure. Wow, we're gonna play some more music. We're gonna play the Stones, Stray Cat Blues. You'll listen to Jonesy's jukebox on Cal OS live from the Viper Room with my good buddy Duff McKagan. Take it away. Yeah. Here yeah, with my buddy, Duff McKagan. Now, you actually did play on that track, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And those are all, um, the, the, the drums and bass, just like a one take sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Any click tracks? Might have been a click to start. Yeah. But Chad doesn't need it. The no. drummer, Chad. Uh, sometimes you play to a click track, something like because you it gives a you timing, and so if you want to do overdubs, you got the time there. Yeah. That's basically what it's for. I don't particularly like it, but yeah, Chad. I mean, Chad is a type of drummer who can play to a click or not to a click. Yeah. It doesn't really uh, dictate how he's going to play the song. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like Slash on there too. Slash playing lead on there, of course. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like the old, uh... All right, now! Yeah. So that was, like, again, like, a, we made this, wrote the songs on the fly. Yeah. And it, we kept screaming, all right, now, like, on the thing, like, well, Ozzy doing all right now? Yeah. Like the old, all right, now. And he did it. He loved it. What was the one, what was the one song that he did that on back in the day? Um, down, 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 sweet, down. Sweetly. Down, down, down. Is it that one? I, uh... All right now, Iron Man was that Iron, Iron Man? Man? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Did he do it on a few though? Oh, it was Iron Man, wasn't it? 
How does how does I the think riff he go? did it a few times. It was like a thing. How does Iron Man go? Bow, down, down, That's down, what I down. said. Uh, yeah, sorry. I I, I, I threw got it. I got the Mott the Hoople song. Hang right? on. You did good. Yeah, thank You're you. You're both doing good. Thank you. Are you enjoying yourself, people in the audience? Thank you. Appreciate you coming down here. Did you enjoy the grub? Did you have grub? Yeah. All righty. All right now. <laughs> um, so, what else are we going to talk about? I don't know. Did you, um, now when you lived in Seattle, yeah. right, when did you come here and start? Oh, we're going all the way back there. All the way back, buddy. You guys know this. Stuff. Well, I came did, here. Did I? I uh, September. I we don't have to here, talk about that then. I got here September 14th, 1984. But who's counting? Yeah. Wow. But I live in Seattle again now. I yeah. See. But um, I got here right after the Olympics of uh, 84, Summer Olympics, mm. LA, uh, ended. So I guess what happened in Hollywood... Um, they had cleaned out, the cops had cleaned out Hollywood because the Olympics were here. I guess at there was some point where there was a bunch of hookers and Hollywood had just kind of, de <laughs> right, um, had degraded to this, to this like. Uh, Sunset was famous for it back right. then, yeah. So you, you you were here before the Olympics, right? I wasn't driving up and down Sunset. Right. No. It, well, maybe a couple of times <laughs> when I needed to get a bottle of milk. Right. But I got here at a time um, when, so the cops vacated Hollywood and it went back to uh, as it was, and and um, uh, uh, rent was super cheap, and there's a lot of like the ghetto birds, the cop, a lot of crime, helicopters, a lot of crime, and uh, Izzy moved in across the street from me, and uh, I met Slash through a through an ad in the Recycler, yeah, um, Slash and I just we just did this on Sunday. Uh, interview for Grohl is doing a new documentary on like band tours or basically I think it comes down to uh, what keeps you going through, yeah. through yeah. we had hitchhiked 1200 miles to yeah. Seattle on this one tour and he and the, you know really the theme of it was why didn't you guys just quit yeah. and give up it's like that wasn't an option yeah we had to make the gig right um, but my, my point it was through, fun probably as well right when you how old was you then you know, twenty. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, but but um, but moved to Hollywood at a time when there was a lot going on, and and when our band came, when Guns N' Roses came together, we were these sort of outsiders to this. I got here. I mean, it was culture shock coming from Seattle. Yeah, in in eighty four. Yeah, I mean, this little punk rock scene in Seattle too. There was flyers and people flyering over other people's flyers. In Seattle, like bands helped out each other, yeah. They'd use each other's gear and rehearsal places, and ask each other to play gigs together, you know, and uh, put up flyers together. Here, it was like this whole other thing, and long hair and uh, like very pro. There was a lot of pro stuff going on. Did they have the old pay to play at that point? It, it was pay to play, yeah, which was completely crazy to me. Right, um, it is crazy. It is crazy. And so yeah, how do you get the money to pay for Because you pay, I think then you would pay for the lights and the PA rental and the sound guy, right? That's what you're paying for. Basically what you're doing, you're buying tickets, assuring the club that um, they don't have to be on the on the hook for selling tickets for your gig, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. All of that stuff was there. But our, our band, what, what I think, you know, Slash and I talking the other day, Sunday we did the interview, and it re reminded us both of like, uh, there was a, a really vibrant scene going on here, if, if you could find it. There was a lot, and Jane's Addiction was starting up, and Chili Peppers were doing the thing, and Social D was kind of coming to their zenith at that point. There was all these uh, other like Sunset Strip sort of bands, yeah. which was a completely crazy thing with outfits, you know, like matching outfits. You mean the, like, Spandex, just matching outfit. I don't. I, I, that's all I remember. It's like, Matt, wow, these guys have matching outfits, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I this, you know, and yeah. our, our our band was completely different, and and um, not that we were trying to be different. We were just different guys, and and you know, you had a couple guys that moved from 
the Midwest and I'd moved down here and Slash came from this really, really cool, like his mom and dad were exceptional artists in their own right. Um, yeah. And, uh, and Steven Adler was this, this kid who had, you know, been through a, a, a rough childhood and, and whatnot, but he was so enthusiastic to, to do whatever it took, you know? And, um, and we became this little, this gang, you know, it was like us against yeah everybody else. I think you need that, uh, just like the pistols, you you would just say you had nothing else going on. It was either this or nothing. It was that or nothing, yeah. And it's the same vibe. I get it. Yeah, there was no backup plan for any no, of us. There was no, no like safety college net. Or no safety, no safety net. net. College Absolutely. wasn't an option or, or whatever people do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I moved here in 84. Cool. To answer your question. Thank you. Yes. But I do live back. I live in Seattle. And, so, I've, and I've been back there since '93. And I, you like the uh, the weather there? Yeah. I mean, you don't like England, though. You don't like going back. I don't the like the weather in England. Yeah. Though. Although when it does rain here now, I do appreciate yeah. it a lot. Yeah, we're getting a lot less rain in Seattle. You do? That's the thing. Yeah. It's Portland is the other one. Portland ain't. You're in Washington, Seattle, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Seattle. That's Washington. Portland's Oregon. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and it, and it is Oregon. Like people come to 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 Seattle, come to the Northwest from other parts, and I go Oregon. But it is a rainy place, Seattle. It's it's rainy for sure. But but last year, for example, we didn't have was it last year summer? We didn't have rain from April twenty seventh until September tenth, which is unheard of. Not 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 one, you know, centimeter of. of <clears throat> And then it gets humid there in the summer, right? Now, now it does. Yeah, yeah. It's humid in the Northwest, which is a, a kind of a new thing. But uh, so, yeah, November we we got off a tour, and Susan and I had done this. We're, we're, our kids are grown. This yeah. is this other thing that's going on in our life, which is kind of amazing. We we have this, um, uh, they call it empty nester thing, but we're going into it super hardcore like we're having a great time yeah doing it and and uh <laughs> um i see well you know um it, it's really great i will say it's great to get to know you know like post like kids are growing up you've done all your work you know you've been around seeing you've yeah. known the kids their whole lives yeah like raising them from little kids and like just being in it 24 7 um to like kind of letting them go and then seeing them do their thing and then to your mate like what do we have in common besides our kids because yeah. that's all we've done is yeah. our kids and to to really realize that you have this like me i got this amazing woman that that i really really like not to say love amazingly but we get along we have our interests are the same and and she's funny as hell and and, and it's great so we're in seattle we got back in november off a tour we had remodeled our house for like grown up stuff. We can have nice things now, you know. We bought like we bought like a couple of pieces of art in Charleston. And we didn't even know how to do it. Like, do we offer you the price that's on the thing? What do you haggle? I don't always know. haggle. I don't know what you do. We we're in this art gallery in Charleston, South Carolina. And we liked this piece. And we're like, do we? Do you just buy it? Like, what's is it? Is it? I don't know. Yeah. But we've been doing things like that, and. um uh, but in November, to like talk, not to, I'm not a climate change uh, uh, champion, but I will say in where I'm from, you can really, if you're from climates that are like, they're saying the same things in London and Stockholm and whatnot. Australia. Yeah, well, Australia right now. I mean, come on. I mean, something's happening for sure. Something's happening. Seattle, uh, it didn't rain at all in November. And that's a, that's, that's a month that should be just yeah. crashing down. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it didn't rain at all. We're going to play a song called Revolution. Not to, down, just to, well, this Sorry, will, guys. This this will fit it's in. It's nice for a Seattleite. Like, hey, it's not raining here. It's 57 degrees in the, at the end of November. You yeah. Know? Um, but. Yeah. Do you know this song, Revolution? This is one of the demos you played for me. Yeah. And this is Duff singing on it. It's the Neurotic Outsiders. Jonesy's Jukebox, Carla West with my buddy. 
Duff McKagan. Take it away. All right. All right now. Did that um, <laughs> did that remind you? Did that that sounds brings back great. memories. Yeah. That You're was, right, the bridge, we should have. That little bit at the end when there's nothing. You're singing in the first part. Yeah. Then in the second part, it just goes into nothing. Let's re-record it. Fools. Fools. I tried to tell you, but you don't listen. <laughs> what a um, great song. Yeah, it was great. That's you know, great. I, I'd never listened to things I played on. Do you? No, not, not much. Ever? Not much. Yeah. Um, not if you're a narcissist, you would. Yeah, I don't, you know, like... I know I, people that did that. They invite you around to their house, actors, and put on their movies. Oh. I mean, it's so uncomfortable That's and weird. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. I'm not naming name. <laughs> tell tell <laughs> no. me later. <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, so that was good to hear that song. Yeah. I yeah. would listen to Neurotic. I, I actually would. Yeah. I probably should. At home. It's a good album. Yeah. It's a good album. Took a took a little bit longer than four weeks, but it was still a good record. Did it pretty quick. Four days. Yeah. Four, yeah. I mean, sorry, four days. But we, we could have done that record in four days. But we had like a producer yeah. and we went up to, we wanted to kind of melt the, the experience, right? Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We went up to Sausalito. Yeah. To uh, what was the name of that studio? Rec record record plant, plant. In Sausalito. Yeah. We soaked up the experience of we doing did, a record. We were in that energy as well in the valley. We did, yeah, some stuff there. Yeah. Basic tracks, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was fun. We, you know, Guy O'Siri signed us from playing all these shows here. Yeah. Guy O, good guy. And uh, gave Guy us. Guy O'Siri now, like, manages. Well, he's been with Madonna and, and the baseball yeah. players. I don't know. Wait. He's, a, he's a big shot, but he's a good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, man. What? The only thing I remember about. Stones. You just played the Stones. I oh, went yeah. and saw them, and Susan and I saw them in, in August. Yeah. In Seattle. It was great. They're still good. It was great. I Amazing. I, I haven't been out forever. No. Well, <laughs> I got our whole crew that does our our tour, yeah. the production crew, they do the Stones. So Susan and I got like this really cool, it's like all of our guys. So it was like going to one of our shows, except it was the Stones. Yeah. And um, they were great. Like uh, Mick had just, he you know, came up and said, oh, sorry, we had to. You he know, had a heart thing, didn't he? He did. He had a valve replacement, I think. And he's up dancing like two weeks later. Jumping up and down. And yeah. And that, that alone was good to see. And those guys are, I don't know, 70s, in their 70s, right? Mid, gotta be. mid 70s? Yeah, gotta be. Yeah. I think he's 76 Jagger. I don't know. Yeah. Someone Google it. But, it, you know, you go see, you see that, you see the, that band, and it's, it's really like, Stones or or Sabbath or whatever I saw the Sa Sabbath reunion tour, and um, you know it makes me think at my age fifty five I like I better get going, I better get busy, and and well I can't do something. But rock is basically dying out from all them bands. You know, you yeah. guys. I think like the last real rockers was you or. Nirvana, that that's grunge. Yeah. Yeah. A few bands from there, but after that, there really has not been much. You know, yeah. it's kind of and now all these old rock and rollers are slowly dying, and then it's going to be the end. I don't know, man. I keep looking for that that new band. I, I'm sure you do too. You, yeah, uh, any radio show. There's a lot of everything. copy kind of bands copying right. what old, you know, whatever. I don't, what do I know, man? But it's that's what it seems like to me. That that's because young people nowadays, they're really not interested in rock and roll. The the mainstream, it's all hip hop and blah blah blah. I just remember that, like going back to the previous conversation, like in Seattle when I when I left, yeah, there, there was a scene and there was bands, like you would rehearse at each other's house, share gear. Yeah. There, there was a scene. There was. Bands trying to help other bands, and and when somebody else would come through town, everybody everybody would go see them. Yeah, you know. Um, and when I moved to Hollywood, it was kind of the same thing. Bands wouldn't help each other out, but but there was a scene, and, yeah. and like everybody would go to 
a gig, you know, like the, the pinnacle gig yeah. and, or, or try to get on the bill or there was a thing. And, and, and here it was very competitive and maybe that's good for rock and roll. Yeah. You know, Jane's, the good bands came out of it. Yeah. Of that thing. Like I was, Steven and I especially would go see Jane's Addiction just to watch the rhythm section. Yeah. And to watch, you know, Perkins and Eric Avery, like how they would do their thing. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that I came along when I came along. I had a lot of fun, and I'm sure you was when you were young, when you came along. Yeah. It's definitely different now, so, you know, I'm sure there'd be some new stuff. Maybe maybe I'm just an old fart and don't like hip-hop. But know? I wonder if, like, you know, I you just wonder if, like, social media and being insular like that. Definitely. As a d- crushes play. there being, like, this Definitely as a scene. play. In a, in a city yeah. like go out talk to each other face to face form a band you know go put up flyers go play a show oh yeah okay i don't know maybe that's going on but that I, ain't gonna happen let me tell you yeah. that you can just put a flyer on on your insta can't yeah you, you can uh yeah <laughs> yeah right anyway we gotta knock it on the head all right here with my buddy duff and uh you've been listening to jonesy jukebox see you next week Woo!